a market fire in Oshodi. We've been showing videos of that fire, you know, just as we teased for this particular um, incident. But it was just such an unfortunate mm. thing to see. Yes, you know, market course. fires in Nigeria have seemed to be something, you know, common. Mm. It's at the Abibatu Mogaji market, also known as the Cairo market in Oshodi. Mm. No one knows, at, as we speak, what the cause of the fire is, mm. you know, but so much speculation so far. You know, reports say from what we've gathered, you know, from social media users that the fire went on for about one hour. Mm. You know, others said, you know, firefighters came to the market about two times but could not put the fire off. And another user on Twitter said she called 112, the emergency response number, for she, she called the number several times mm. and she was put on hold for about 10 minutes. So that's the situation of things right now. The Cairo market, you know, got engulfed in flames last night. And uh, we hope to speak to, we hope to speak to you know people in the fire service about this. Okay, because it is really a very sad incident. You know when we have fire, um, uh, fire outbreaks like that all over Lagos. But over time, it's one would have thought that uh, the Lagos State um, Fire Service and of course um, the Emergency Management Authority have actually been able to circumvent all of that. And uh, you know because over time when there are outbreaks, uh, you know. It has been uh, forestalled over All time right. in Lagos. All right, so we have the spokesman of the Lagos Fire Service with us to bring more clarity on the situation. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good to have you join us on The Breakfast this morning. Please bring us up to speed regarding that market fire in Oshodi last night. Okay, the market fire was actually reported to us uh, by... 2010, that's uh, 10 minutes past 8 p.m. last night. And then it's just a strong to from uh, our nearest fire station there, that's uh, at Bolade inside the safety arena. So that was the first fire engine that turned out there. Uh, so two other fire engines also uh, raised down there from uh, Lupeju as well as uh, the headquarters from Alausa so that the management and more experienced hands can be on top of the situation as it escalates. Okay, the, what's the, the situation? That, um, mm. What's the situation presently? Can you bring us up to speed specifically as per what we have in hand? Were there any casualty and uh, the severity of um, the, the, the fire? Can you just tell us more? Okay, there, there is no casualty. Um, there is no casualty and no injured persons uh, that we rescued at the scene. Uh, but uh, a fire of this magnitude, it should be understood that uh, everything within the fire premises at the scene is combustible because the stock deals in there are textile materials. So, and they are very free burning materials and it's easily, and you know, the, the structure of the fire itself it's also a makeshift structure, which is built with iron rod and tarpaulins. And when you talk of tarpaulins, it's also an hard textile material, which is also free burning. So all these aid the quick spread of the fire. But if I tell you that that fire was also put off in record time, you may have to look at how many hours does it take us to put off such fire with such materials within the, uh, the fire scene, because everything around there sums up to having to the spread of the fire, because they are all combustible and free burning materials. All right, Mr. Shakiru, you, you mentioned that the fire started at around 10 minutes past 8 p.m. and that the yes. fire service is very close to that market. So how long did yes. it take for the fire service to put out that fire? Uh, it takes about two, two hours because as at uh, 10 o'clock, the fire was completely under control. So but definitely we have some pocket of fire that we need to put out because when a fire is no more spreading, you have caught the spread and you've already entangled the fire that it cannot do any harm or damage, then definitely the fire is within your control and definitely you need to stock about, like I said, this free burning material, they are pile of materials, as in uh, textile materials. So you still need to get deep down into them to make sure they are soaked 
uh, with enough water so that the fire will not reignite or spread further to where you have curtailed it. All right, uh, Mr. Shakir, uh, specifically now, can you tell us um, exactly uh, what the immediate cause of the fire was? And then again, uh, what uh, uh, are you doing in terms of uh, preventing reoccurrence? Uh, what are you doing in, in terms of enlightenment on the, uh, the traders around that axis, knowing that what they deal in is actually combustible? Okay, okay. Uh, specifically, the cause of the fire is still being investigated. Because when fire happens, especially at night, the very first thing to do is just put out the fire, gather some information, and probably uh, do some investigation at that scene to see whether you can unravel the cause. But preliminary now, we have not been able to pin down the cause of the fire because that investigation is still ongoing. And as soon as we don't, we will let the public know. But uh, if uh, the market authorities are playing by the rules. I think uh, some of this fire will actually will not be uh, witnessed because the rule is at 6 p.m. the market is supposed to close and nobody should be staying back. And if you are closing up for the day, your business, whether at the office or you are leaving your home or you are leaving your shops, premises, you are expected to put off all electronics all electrical installations. And this, it will not be enough to just pull them out. It is also good that you unplug them from the wall socket so that it won't trigger whether you are there or not. If there is a power obstruction, it won't trigger any prayer because most times you hear that it is an electrical upsurge. An electric city will not upsurge anything that is not put on its current. Okay. That's why it is advisable to own, also sw uh, switch off and unplug your socket. And you don't leave any electronics or electrical gadgets unattended to. All right, Mr. Shakiru. Um, do you have details as to how many shops are in that market and the level of damage you know, caused? Well, uh, several, several damage, you see. Because uh, uh, these shops are in, they are Shane's shops. And then we are trying to count them, but we were not able to pin down the number last night. But this job spans at about, uh, uh, in a premises of about two acres. And when you say two acres, that's about uh, six plots, right? So the, it's really, really expanded. But definitely we are going to ascertain the numbers of the shop because we are working with the market authority. We are with uh, the Baba Lodger last night and then they are cooperating to see how we can unravel all the nuances, uh, oh. nuances behind the surge of the fire. All right, Mr. Amadou Shakiru, the spokesman, Lagos State Fire Service, thank you very much for joining us this morning on The Breakfast. You are most welcome. All right. So this, this conversation is still ongoing. I think we'll have a guest join us much later to talk about this situation. It's something we've, we've seen, mm. you know, one time too many market fires here and there. You know, conspiracy theories will come up. People say this definitely did not just happen by itself. Mm. You know, we, we heard Mr. Shakiri here say, say even though they're yet to unravel the cause of the fire, but mm. he is implying that. Possibly, mm -hmm. it's an electric surge that might have caused this fire. Um, most of the times, that's what we usually see uh, around uh, shops and, of course, uh, people who uh, do businesses. You know, most times, uh, some of them, especially so some of them even uh, who have, like, fridges uh, who need to sell cold drinks, you know, the next day, sometimes you find out that they leave um, their, their refrigerators, their freezers on you know, over the night uh, because they feel there should be power at that particular time so they could actually store enough, you know, cold drinks uh, to sell for the next day. So most times they don't even turn off all their devices before they go home. Indeed. When our next guest joins us, mm. lots of questions I need to ask True. because we heard reports on social media about people, you know, going into loot the shops that were, you That's know, That's just sad. So, so terrible that you have opportunities to take mm. advantage of situations like this. Also, questions I need to ask regarding the crowd. Mm. Why, why is it that our, our mechanism mm. for controlling such incidents is just poor in my assessment because you find a fire mm. 
such a huge fire and then people gathering in their, in their numbers. I mean, if you there know, was an explosion, yes. everybody there would become victims. So. Yes, and yeah, you could just be affected and negatively. The thing is that in as much as some people may want to play, you know, the good Samaritan here, others are actually going there for selfish uh, reasons. But they should understand that they we need to um, be able to sort out the issue of um, crowd control and allow the yes. you know emergency uh, responders to do their job because they are all, as an if you try to you know help in your own way. You might be actually putting yourself in, in harm's way. way. Indeed, That's Justin, I do agree with you. Sadly, we can't bring our next guest, but uh, Mr. Amadou Shakiru um, did, you know, give us the basics regarding that market fire. We'll would stay on top of the matter and mm. bring you more updates in our subsequent news bulletins on Plus TV Africa.